band, a Polish group called Kobza with a traditional Ukrainian folk song called Kalena, and that translates as highbush cranberry tree, which are pretty much ready to harvest right about now. But it's not really about harvesting cranberries or about cranberry trees, but rather about a young girl under a cranberry tree and a little bit of hanky-panky going on there. (laughs) A delightful traditional Ukrainian folk song by Kobza called Kalena. Dobry večer, šenovni radio suhači, ta vitaju vas vsih na radio peredaču Naš Holos, radio Krinskoho Korenja, kot se rapodijac je vam jak svečajno šče o sobote v šosti hodeni na bahatomovni radio stanci AM 1320 CHMB v misti Vancouveri i po mareži PCJ Radio Mižnorodnemu. Pre mikrofoni pa vi nam okori, djakuju što rišale prebuta zimnoju nastupnu hodenu. Me majmo duše cikavi novene nasjeništji programi i čudovu ukrajinsku muziku. Hello there and welcome to Nash Holos Ukrainian Roots Radio here on AM 1320 CHMB Vancouver, coming to you as usual every Saturday evening from 6 to 7 p.m. As well, it airs in international syndication on PCJ Radio International. I'm your host, Paula demchuk mccrory Pukrinska Pavlina. I'm delighted that you've joined me. We've got a great program lined up for you on Ukrainian Jewish heritage, an, an astonishing story about a Crimean Tatar woman and how she saved 88 Jewish children during the Holocaust. We've also got our usual proverb of the week, other items of interest, and great Ukrainian music. And coming up next, a Ukrainian group by the name of Dzvone and... A song that was uh, quite popular, oh, going back a couple decades now, is called Smereka, which translates as spruce tree, but it's really a song about a girl. Cross 
Растеш далеко, чарівна моя смереко. Ой, смереко, розкажи мені, смереко, чому ти так ростеш далеко, чарівна моя смереко. Ростеш далеко, чарівна моя смереко. Thanks to the foresight and generosity of its donors, the Taras Shevchenko Foundation has been investing in the future of the Ukrainian-Canadian community for over 50 years. Since 1963, the Taras Shevchenko Foundation has been funding initiatives that strengthen our Ukrainian-Canadian identity and enhance our Ukrainian-Canadian cultural heritage. These include fine and performing arts and arts groups, museums, cultural centers, education, as well as authors, journalists, and the Ukrainian-Canadian media, including this program. The Foundation strives to become the premier not-for-profit foundation in a Canada which acknowledges the Ukrainian-Canadian community as a fundamental component of Canadian society. Nash Hollis listeners are encouraged to support this vision through continued donations into the future. To apply for grants, make a donation, or for more information, visit ShochenkoFoundation.com. And from Edmonton, Alberta, that was the Euphoria Band with a traditional Ukrainian folk song, Ros Prehaite Chlopci Koni, Unharness the Horses Boys. Up next, a song called Dimi by Yasinev from somewhere in Canada long, long ago. Here they are now, Yasinev with Dimi. Дівчинку, я 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 д
destino de mim Очень мало я церна, те, что сумно поважно дни Не слабой дьявода, повьяна теплым ветром дни И то дело я лула, завтра мало сполнянула дни Better. 
From Toronto, Ontario, that was Dunai from their most recent recording made a couple of years ago, ah, 2015, I think now. And that was traditional Ukrainian folk song, Zadunayim, Beyond the Danube. Up next, we're going to be going back in time again. And this is Luba coming up next from Montreal. And traditional Ukrainian folk song, Zhetomate, a song all about rye, sort of.
Chopin that is a contemporary favorite called Chomtene Show, Why Didn't You Come, performed by a group called Luhanske Kozake, and that was recorded back when Ukraine was not torn apart, and uh, that area of Ukraine was part of a nation of hope. Again, Luhanske Kozake with Chomtene Show. Up next, on a bit of a lighter note, a uh, traditional Ukrainian folk song by an American group called Korenya. And uh, this is a song about an older gentleman who is, um, I guess, widowed and lonely and looking to get married. And he's got, he's got his eye on a young girl who is definitely not interested. Here is Korenya now with Zadumau Didochok. <laughs> Задумав дідочок, задумав жениться, ой, сяв дом на дома, задумав жениться, ой, сяв дом на дома, задумав жениться, що старо не хочеться, молода не піде, ой, сяв дом на дома, молода не піде, ой, сяв дом на дома, молода не піде. Хоч вона піде, то не ляже спати. Ой, сєрто, мату, мата, не ляже спати. Ой, сєрто, мату, мата, не ляже спати. Хоч ляже спати, то не обернеться. Ой, сєрто, мату, мата, не обернеться. Ой, сєрто, мату, мата, не обернеться. Хоч обернеться, то не поцілує. Ой, сєрто, мату, мата, не поцілує. Ой, сєрто, мату, мата, не поцілує. Поцілує, одвернеться сплюне. Ой, сир, дума, дума, одвернеться сплюне. Ой, сир, дума, дума, одвернеться сплюне. Що у тебе діду запинає борода? Ой, сир, дума, дума, запинає борода. Ой, сир, дума, дума, запинає борода. Дідочок, вранці на риночок, ой, сів дума, дума, вранці на риночок, ой, сів дума, дума, вранці на риночок, та купив на гайку, добро ютро тянку, ой, сів дума, дума, добро ютро тянку, ой, сів дума, дума, добро ютро тянку, що у тебе діду, що в кого я ворона. This is CHMB, AM 1320, Vancouver. And now for a look at Ukraine's rich Jewish heritage, then and now. Brought to you by the Ukrainian Jewish Encounter, based in Toronto, Ontario. Stories continue to surface about people in Ukraine and surrounding areas who saved Jews from the Nazis during the Holocaust in World War II. Each one of them is heartrending and inspiring in its own unique way. But one story that has emerged very recently is particularly astonishing. It's the story of a Crimean Tatar woman who saved the lives of 88 Jewish children not once, but twice. First from the Nazi Gestapo, and again two years later from the Soviet secret police, the NKVD. The story has come to light as the result of a film recently released in Ukraine and screened in Canada and the United States. The film recounts events of the Holocaust, but through the prism of another genocide, the 1944 deportation of the Crimean Tatars, which itself has come to light only recently. In April of 1944, Soviet forces regained control of Crimea after more than two years of Nazi occupation. But almost immediately after the peninsula was liberated, it faced a new wave of repression from its liberators. In May of 1944, on orders of Soviet dictator Joseph Stalin, Crimean Tatars were deported en masse. Many died in transit or were killed by the NKVD. Many others perished from inhumane treatment and conditions during transit and resettlement. 
The Ukrainian film Chuzha Moletva, which translates as A Prayer of Strangers or Alien Prayer, tells this tragic but inspiring story of the rescue of dozens of Jewish children twice during World War II. The story is based on real-life historical events and characters. Sadie Arafova was a Crimean Tatar woman running a kindergarten in the small city of Bekchisarai when the Nazis invaded the Crimean Peninsula in 1941. As they were being rounded up by the Nazis, the Jews of Bekchisarai tried to save their children by sending them into hiding. Some of the children found Sadie Arafova's kindergarten and sought refuge there. Deathly afraid, at first she refused, but compassion won and she agreed to shelter them. Since the Nazis had recently ordered her to harbor the street children of Bakchisarai, her kindergarten had become essentially an orphanage. So Sadie hid the Jewish children in plain sight. She did this by giving them each a Crimean Tatar identity. She forged documents and switched identities by tampering with state documents to give them each a new name and life story. She taught them Islamic and Tatar traditions so they could pass as Crimean Tatars. To complete the picture, she taught them how to pray like Crimean Tatars. It was a dangerous move in a dangerous time. The Nazis were constantly suspicious and always on the lookout for Jews. At one point they called Sadie in for questioning and beat her savagely. But she held fast to her story. The true identities of the Jewish children remained secret until the end of the Nazi occupation. This daring rescue saved the Jewish children from the Nazis. It also saved them from the next unexpected wave of terror by the Soviets. But this second time, Sadie's luck ran out. No sooner had the Red Army liberated the Crimean Peninsula from the Nazis, it unleashed its own murderous attack on innocent civilians. This time, the target was the Crimean Tatars. Stalin ordered them deported en masse on the false accusation of having collectively collaborated with the Nazis. Over 180,000 Crimean Tatars, nearly 20% of the peninsula's entire population, was deported. They were herded into crowded, uncomfortable, and unsanitary train cars on virtually no notice in a matter of just three days. Crimean Tatar men fighting in the Red Army were demobilized and sent into labor camps in Siberia and in the Ural Mountains. Civilians were shipped off to Uzbekistan in Central Asia and remote regions in Russia. The majority of the civilian deportees were women, children, and the elderly. Conditions of the transfer were exceedingly harsh and fatal for many of them. The weakest ones soon succumbed to malnutrition, thirst, cold, overcrowding, and infectious diseases in transit and in the ill-prepared settlement camps. It is estimated that up to half perished within the first 18 months of exile. Sadie Arafova and her entire orphanage were about to be hauled away by the NKVD when she revealed the long-hidden birth certificates of her Jewish charges. The NKVD let the Jewish children go, but Sadie and the Crimean Tatar children were shipped off to Uzbekistan. It was only after Ukraine gained independence in 1991 that Sadie was able to return to her hometown of Bakhtisarai in Crimea. She passed away in 2007. Just a few years later, history would repeat itself. The Kremlin struck again in 2014, and today Russia once again occupies Crimea. Ironically, the second Russian occupation of Crimea has helped to shed light on the first and on the genocide that followed. As scholars became aware of it, they pushed to open secret archives, and survivors began to speak of it. A popular Ukrainian singer of Crimean Tatar descent released a song which won the 2016 Eurovision contest, much to the chagrin of the Kremlin. The lyrics for Jamila's song 1944 is based on the story of her great-grandmother, who was deported in 1944. It became the theme song for the film Chuja Moletva, A Prayer of Strangers. The director of A Prayer of Strangers is a Crimean Tatar himself, born in exile in Uzbekistan 
in 1972. He knows the Crimean Tatar Muslim prayer well. Some episodes of the film are based on his own family's stories. During the Soviet era, it was forbidden to even mention the 1944 Crimean deportation. Now, despite the displeasure of the Kremlin's current occupants, the story is nonetheless becoming better known outside Russia. But in Russian-occupied Crimea today, Tatars still living there are again forbidden to hold public commemoration of the victims of the deportation in their native land. And they face repressions which are little known and seldom reported in the Western media. Because of the current Russian occupation of Crimea, filming was done in mainland Ukraine and in neighboring Georgia, which has a similar topography to Crimea. Filming was done in Russian, German, and Georgian, and later dubbed in Ukrainian. It was released in Ukrainian theaters in 2017. Last year it was released with English subtitles and the title 87 Strangers. It screened in Toronto and Ottawa in the fall of 2018 by Crimean Tatar organizations in Canada in cooperation with the Ukrainian Canadian Film Festival. It has also been screened by a few Jewish organizations in the United States. An interview with the director of A Prayer of Strangers by Ukraine's public broadcaster, Hromatska Radio, can be found in Ukrainian and in English translation at the Ukrainian Jewish Encounter website. It is titled A Boomerang of Goodness. In the next episode of Ukrainian Jewish Heritage here on Nasholos Ukrainian Roots Radio, we will air an interview with Adrian Zwicker, an Austrian actor who played the role of the Nazi SS officer in the film Chuja Moletva, a Prayer of Strangers. This is Pavlina, producer and host of Nash Holos Ukrainian Roots Radio. I hope you enjoyed this story of the brave Crimean Tatar woman. Please join us for more of the story on the next episode of Ukrainian Jewish Heritage here on Nash Holos Ukrainian Roots Radio. So, until then, Shalom. Ukrainian Jewish Heritage is brought to you by the Ukrainian Jewish Encounter, based in Toronto, Ontario. To find out more about their work, visit their website and follow them on Facebook and Twitter. Transcripts and audio files of this and earlier broadcasts of Ukrainian Jewish Heritage are available at their website, ukrainianjewishencounter.org, as well as at the Nasholos website, www.nasholos.com. Ей, 
прийде пора і година розплати для ворога на глупане Стане під тією карати, тю ж у них все віру прийде. And a popular group from Montreal from back in the 70s, 80s, and uh, still quite popular, um, although they're not together anymore. And recently, unfortunately, they lost one of their members. But uh, another, uh, the others are around, and one of them has his own podcast now coming out of Ontario, London, and other points, uh, campus radio stations all around uh, southern Ontario. And uh, it is called Nasha Kasha, hosted by Stefan Andrusiak, who you probably have heard from some of his Rushnis Chuk stories here on Nash Holis. If you haven't t- tuned in to his podcast yet and radio show, then make sure that you do. It's called, again, Nash Kasha. And that song by Rushnis Chuk from way back when was the ballad of Yuri Chuchunik, a uh, famous Ukrainian hetman. And coming up next, a little more contemporary um, group from Winnipeg. They are uh, still around. They recorded, I think, three albums, which uh, we have here in our Nash Holos Music Library. And uh, this is from their most recent and uh, one of my favorite songs on that album. And it is called Tampuyiko Nashivan, There Went Our Johnny.
is what she told me. Yes, yes, yes. Mother, may I go out dancing? Yes, my darling daughter. Mother, may I try romancing? Yes, my darling daughter. What if there's a moon, Mama, darling, and it's shining on the water? Mother, must I keep on dancing? Maximovich with a medley of a traditional Ukrainian folk song and the North American rendition that uh, was very popular back in the 40s, 50s. And that was Yes, My Darling Daughter, as well the Ukrainian song, of course, Oine Khodekhretsu, Don't Go Out Into the Woods, Greg. Up next, a group from Ukraine called Anatoly Rodenko in the Folklore Ensemble Kiev. And here they are with a very patriotic Ukrainian tune, in a hori tam jensi jnut, reapers reaping on the hill. Hey, 
And that was Yogi Kloss from Winnipeg with the Wedding March from Carpathia. You've been listening to Nash Holos Ukrainian Roots Radio, broadcasting in Vancouver on AM 1320 CHMB, in Nanaimo on CHLY 101.7 FM, and around the world on PCJ Radio International. Please visit us in between broadcasts at our website, www.nashholos.com. You can get transcripts and audio files of interviews there, as well as features such as Ukrainian Jewish Heritage and Knishka Corner Book Reviews. Information about the show and links to our podcast feed, our new gift boutique, and our Patreon site where you'll find the weekly playlist and proverbs. I do hope you'll engage with me there and support the show by becoming a patron. Again, our URL is www.nashholos.com. I love to hear from you, so please send your suggestions, dedications, and requests. Your comments are always welcome. Na žal mi žiškin čila našu programu, vše časti domu vyskazati do pobačenja, ale pred tem ja hoću zalašati vas takimi slovami mudroste. Vsjaka nevdača Zastavljaja razumnu ljudenu do dumanja. And our proverb of the week translates as Every failure makes an intelligent person stop and think. Well, our time is about up, so to take us to the end of our program, we have the D Drifters 5 from Winnipeg, I think, again a long time ago, in a traditional Ukrainian folk song, Oh How I Love Peter. I'm Pavlina on behalf of all of us here at Nash Holos and AM thirteen twenty. Thanks for listening and Dobranich. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this edition of the show. If you're not yet a Patreon supporter of Nosh Holos, I hope you'll consider becoming one today, with the digital equivalent of a cup of coffee once or twice a month, or maybe even a snack or a meal. There's an option for every budget, and even a dollar a month tells me you value the show and my efforts to produce and bring it to you. Becoming a Patreon supporter will give you the opportunity to provide feedback to help improve the show, create cool swag to promote it, and swap ideas on how to promote Ukrainian culture in between broadcasts and podcasts. Your contribution will also help to preserve a well-established on-air and online venue of almost 30 years running to continue promoting Ukrainian culture and heritage long after I've retired, which will happen sooner rather than later. 
Your contribution will help that transition happen, and future generations will be able to enjoy the music and other Nacholas programming that you currently do. To become a Patreon supporter, just go to www.patreon.com and search for Nash Holos. That's patron with an E, spelled P-A-T-R-E-O-N. Or go to www.nashholos.com and click on the orange Patreon button on any page there. Thank you for listening and for your support. Shtero